Mike was sitting around at home doing nothing. <laughs> can, I, can I just clear that up? I was actually rehabbing from spinal surgery, so, you know, there was a reason why I was sitting Yeah, like I said, he was sitting around at home doing nothing, moping, feeling sorry for himself. And I said, Mike, if you're that crazy, why don't you come and work for me? I'll pay you nothing and you can lend me some money. <laughs> I said, all right, well, it must be an interesting job. He went, oh, yeah, it's interesting. Get on a plane and get over here. The idea for the machine evolved over quite a long period of time actually. The original idea was for a different machine, uh, but there wasn't much uh, market potential for that, so it sat dormant in my mind for quite a while until there was a shortage of bricklayers in uh, 2005. Between 2005 and 2008 we were funded enough to make pretty good progress, and then when the GFC came along in 2008, the timing of that was absolutely impeccable in all the wrong ways. Yeah, what we had was a machine that was basically built but not working. And just as we'd got our information memorandum organised to do that, and of course uh, all the big companies involved went back to their core business. So I had to resurrect my old engineering business and just kept enough work going on Hadrian that it didn't die. I knew the potential for the project was so big. You know, Mark found a way to keep the project just alive with just a pulse. He eventually takes me up the workshop and showed me the Adrian 105, which was just this big yellow machine. And I said, what the hell is that? He said, well, it's a machine that lays bricks. And uh, we had a bit of a crawl over it and, you know, sort of spun my imagination around a little bit. A lot of time went by, that machine sat idle. The project sat idle for nearly six years and I think the timing of me coming in there, a time when I think people were tired of living in, and, and operating in a, in a low or no stimulated, no, low, no stimulus environment and I don't know how many pairs of shoes I wore out going from office to office or boardroom to boardroom trying to explain to people what this meant if it worked and the potential for it and you know at the times we were like, well, why do you need a machine to lay a brick, you know, there's people for that but without understanding the, the overriding problem, which is what kicked the project off initially, the technology that sits behind this, this machine, the enabling technology, was something that he put together in his head before it had an application. Uh, what the capital markets or, or investors want to understand was what came first, the technology or the idea. When somebody had a particular pain point or a problem, Mark was able to apply that technology that he developed some years earlier uh, to a machine that could lay a brick or a block. The technology that he had conceptualised was still 10 years away from being able to work because computing speed, data rates simply weren't there. Uh, laser technology simply was not where it needed to be, but he knew what was coming. Uh, he's able to think 10 years forward and understand where technology is going to be a decade away and start to build a plan around having access to three times the data rate or you know, much higher levels of technology in different aspects of what it is we're trying to do. And be patient enough to wait for that technology to develop and catch up. A machine that can lay a brick uh, relates to anybody that's ever built a house. Everybody can connect with this and it's a great story and a lot of people got involved with this project, not because they wanted anything out of it, because they wanted to see the damn thing succeed. You know, as well as I do, there were people that helped us on this journey that worked for nothing, because it was, it just seemed so interesting. And, you know, we'd sit around looking at this static machine, we'd sit around on drums or milk crates, because we didn't have chairs. And we'd dream about where we could be in a year's time if we did this, this, or this. And then we went about doing those things. And we did that for three years without a buck coming through the door. Well, we did some crazy things, you know, like employing uni students to work on it through Gumtree yeah. ads, you know. It's we not, did. It's not really normal. But they're still working for us now. You know, we employed them, we gave them an opportunity to, you know, do some work whilst they were studying for their degrees. And they learnt enough about this project and had enough understanding of what we were trying to do that they've now become some of the most valuable people in our team. 
And I do remember building the very first structure that we got very excited about, uh, which didn't excite a whole lot of other people because uh, it was just like a square box. But you know, that was almost like uh, the Wright brothers taking their first flight. We quickly put a program in place where we built something like a small granny flat or something, didn't we? Like a, a small a structure with a couple of rooms and a, and, a, and a pillar out the front. And we programmed the machine up and we, we got the team together. We said, right, we're going to start here and finish there. And we don't know how long it's going to take, but we're going to build this structure and we're going to show the world what the machine could actually do. And that was the tipping point. That's where everything changed. Yeah, so quite, quite a few things happened. We won uh, WA Innovator of the Year Award. We started talking with Caterpillar. And let's not forget that first trip to the States, it came off the back of a call from the guys at Brick and Water Ventures in San Francisco who said, well, you know, is it true that you guys are not using wet water? Are you using construction adhesive? And we said, yeah, that's right. We went to San Francisco, uh, we went to Washington, we we're in a Tesla flying down the freeway through Silicon Valley on our way to NASA. People wanted to see us. I mean, we're not, we're not public people, we're pretty private people, but people wanted to talk to us. You know, they wanted to know us more as people and, and who, who were the people behind this potential new technology and that was, that was different. You know, Mark, Gary and I thought that we'd be taking that yellow machine out there, the 105, to work ourselves. If no one else believed that this could be done, the three of us were going to take that machine out and we were going to build houses with that machine and we're going to try and make enough money off over time to build a second one. We had a plan, we, we, I remember we, we did a spreadsheet on this and we thought we start working this one and we charge you know 65 cents a brick and we can do you know a house a fortnight uh, and we all eat bread and Vegemite, within 18 months we could potentially have enough money to build a second one. And that wasn't all that long ago. What's been a continual theme is just the scope of what we're doing keeps growing. When we built and demonstrated 105 it was about showing that the technology worked. And then when we started building Hadrian X, it was all about building the first commercial machine. Now it's about how do we scale that to build 3,000. The scope of what you're doing with that machine is getting in globally and actually changing the way construction's done.